All right, so we're late. We're fresh out of our latest mission, continuing to level up the wield in an attempt to access its final tier two boss. Because I, I want to do all the tier two bosses before we go on to the final tier three ones that exist in this game right now. I figure that's just a nice, even way of handling the party. So we have and Kerbal leveled up, which means I'm going to try to avoid using them, just like my other high level characters. Go ahead and sort by experience level real quick. Just try to keep better track of this. So I want I want to level them up evenly just because I, I want to avoid making level level fives before we finish the, those bosses because otherwise we'll have characters that are too high for the actual things we're trying to do around here. So did I get enough? We have a bunch of deeds that might be enough to upgrade the blacksmith, which would be great news. And it is. Wow, we almost have enough for both upgrades. We need thirty six. Oh no, sorry, I'm misreading it. We need. Oh god, I was looking at the crest, which is the lower number. Uh, so. In order to finish upgrading the blacksmith, not actually not even finish, just make more progress here, we're going to need a hundred and what was it, twenty-six. My mind's melting right now. We're gonna need fifty-two. I don't know why I was saying hundred anything. We need fifty-two deeds. I have thirty, so I can upgrade one of these. Do I want higher level armor or higher level weapons? I'm not sure. More survivability versus faster damage. It's actually a little. A little hard to make my mind up there just because of the fact that uh, if I increased my damage output, it means higher DPS. And if I have higher DPS, then when I fight someone like the Crone, I can, for example, more consistently wipe out... I'm just gonna go for weapons. Fan the flames. Mold the metal. We are raising an army. For once, I'm doing the opposite of the usual road. I'm actually doing the offensive thing before the defensive thing. But that's because I'm thinking of the crow and like the main difficulty there is that you need to break the pot as fast as possible whenever he put, they put a, a player into it because otherwise it's just a boss that's not that hard to fight. But that damn thing melting your party members is a problem so you need to be able to do as much damage as you can as quickly as you can which justifies going to the blacksmith. But we have some high stress characters if I remember correctly so let's deal with that. Take a visit to the abbey and it's, very, it's ex increasingly powerful ability to help people out here. Uh... I've completely maxed out the Cloister, which means it only costs 700 to heal people here. There's probably some characters that it's less effective for, but the low price kind of uh, justifies itself. I need to think about who I'm going to take on my next mission here. So Lord Verd can tank, so Sneak and Heal. Looking at level 3 characters here. Uh, Thamurd is probably going to be recovering here, which leaves... Yeah, if, if the Murd and Luke and Serena are recovering, that means Main G and Lucas are the two remaining characters in that tier of characters. So... That means, yeah, I was, I was thinking of having Main G recover too, but... At this point, I'm just gonna have to take them into, into combat because they're the lowest stress of the remaining characters. So that means my mission composition is probably going to go... Lord Verd, Main G, Lucas, Sozni. Actually, swap these two. There we go, because uh, if they're in the second rank, then Lord Verd can do that uh, nice dash ability to wipe out one of the, the back people. That'll probably be an effective group. So let's look into upgrading some of their weapons, since we can do that now. Particularly those that actually use their weapons, of course. So right off the bat, we'll do Lord Verd. It's going to go from green to blue, and we, we get one damage, one crit. No no increase to speed, but still, it's still a noteworthy increase in power. Uh, switch to main G. Uh, also getting one damage and nothing else. Ah, uh -huh. no crit, no speed. Still, this person's continually getting more speed in general, so that's, that's definitely helping, but... Next upgrade out of the way, and then Lucas is gonna need one. Uh, same thing, one damage and nothing else. Alright. It's the next tier, at least. Should It should help out with something. Let's take a... I might just stop there, but let's take a look at the guild. Can I upgrade anything? But Oh, right, Lucas recently leveled up, so I can level up his bleed abilities to be more effective. What do I have equipped right now? I have both bleeds equipped, and I have the buff equipped. The buff is handy, so I might want to keep that around. I could make it more powerful. More speed, more accuracy, more crit. Yeah. That seems like a good roll for him to play. So two speed, five accuracy, four crit. Seems like a strong buff for the party to have. Uh, I like the stress recovery, but the problem is that he has to be in the back rank for it, which makes it problematic. Though he does have Dirk Stab that moves him forward to three, and he is relatively tanky because he's hard to hit. So one valid strategy if you want to deal with with uh, with stress 
is that I could start every fight with him in the back row, do Inspiring Tune the first round, and then do Dirk Stab to, la to go launching forward and do damage. But I don't know if I necessarily want to take that route. I think I'm going to have him focus on his bleed abilities for now instead. I have to be careful about his part- about his location. His preferred position is in the third spot. Okay. So right now it'll be an ideal setup, actually. What about main G? I could increase the, the effectiveness of Hugh. I don't think- I don't actually use that many of his other abilities, necessarily. Although him having- having a self-heal is a cool ability. Uh... How much do I want to invest in that right now, though? Huh. Intimidate, that's the, uh... Knock back your opponent, reduce their accuracy. It's a it's just an attack that's effective as a as a, a semi defensive move. And this the self buff for a bunch of damage, that could actually be a big deal because if you, if you increase if you buff it up, that could potentially be very effective. Right, yeah, right now if I if I buff it up, it does more damage, and it, oh the the accuracy loss decreases. Let's look into this. More damage, less accuracy loss, more crit. Okay, so 55% bonus damage, minus 7 crit, uh, accuracy, plus 8% crit. That actually seems like a good buff for this character to have. And there's a, the bonus to accuracy. I, I'll take this one instead. The Losing more accuracy on a character that already isn't that accurate is a bummer, for sure. But uh, having him be really devastating when he lands could be a nice situation. I'll have to equip him with some nice damage increasing items. I could also potentially give him something that makes him more accurate. Do I want to do I want to do I want to invest get into invest into Hugh? Let's just do it. There we go. That's th that's what I'll be upgrading for now, I'm sure. Lord Verd's fine. Sozni. Oh. All oh, right. I haven't been leveling up the party heal cuz it won't do anything yet. So I might as well just let if I, if the money's not going to do anything right now, I might as well just let it sit. I'll take a look at the Nomad wagon, but it's probably nothing worthwhile. That hell- there's that bleeding pendant that the Hellion sh always gets access to. Alright. Oh, bonus dodge. Oh, interesting. When you have high health, you get way more bo- uh... You get way more, uh, dodge. You also get more dodge when you're low on health, so it's actually... So there, there's a, uh, there's a, there's a negative effect for being in the middle, I suppose, in that it's, uh, it's using up an equipment slot and not giving you any more dodge, but... That's a pretty positive effect to just be like, hey, t plus 10 dodge when you're high on health. That'd be a good thing to give to somebody, but I can't afford it right now, unfortunately, so I'm just gonna have to deal with it. That's also nice, a plus 10 dodge item. What's this though, the ancestral item? Oh, it's the Mater's, Martyr's Seal. I've seen this a few times now, every now and then, in, in, this, in this store. I may have not called it up before. Basically, it makes you really effective. It makes you more likely to enter uh, de uh, Death's Door, and it makes you more likely to survive being on Death's Door, and gives you benefits for being at Death's Door, but it is still a pretty severe gamble with your character's life to be encouraging them to be almost dead. I think that's about all I want to do. Did I increase the weapon power? Yeah. That's about all I want to do for now, because ne the next step is to actually embark on the mission, because then I can get the money to do further upgrades, because things are getting a little expensive, because I have so many tiers of upgrades to buy. Still though, this was a rare case of me investing particularly heavy into people's skills that were kind of behind. So every time I catch someone up, that's more money I don't have to spend later because uh, they're going to be caught up at that point. And just a quick, a quick weapon upgrade is not quite as expensive. But yeah, buying tier four weapons for three characters did eat away at my money a bit. I'm gonna take a quick look. Let's see, Sozni already is equipped. Lord Verd is equipped. Oh right. Um, the big thing I want to grab is that I think it's Serene. Yeah. Serene has my really high damage item that I want to give to... There we go. So this character has plus 20... Plus 35% damage. Plus 20% hit points. Plus 2 speed. So a few issues with stress and with uh, accuracy. Which is already bad because his accuracy is not great. But he should be devastatingly powerful when he actually lands hits. The concern is just that he may have difficulties with that. Uh, depending on who I bring, though, we may be able to... Let's see. Oh, he, ha he actually has a skill that you can use at camping to give him accuracy. That would be handy. And look looking at who else I'm bringing along, there's probably someone else who gives you accuracy. Alright, I can, I can bless him for more accuracy. And I can... Who else did I bring? Lucas? And, oh yeah, most, more accuracy. So I could use two characters to buff his accuracy to counteract all the negative effects I'm giving him. 
and Mangy could become comically powerful in that situation, so I'll be counting on that camping situation. I could also give him the, the self-accuracy. Maybe, maybe I should just go ahead and invest in that real quick. A rare case of me buying a camping skill, but I think I'm... It's a, it's a good thing to have to counteract one of his primary negatives. Reduce stress by 20, 10 accuracy. Yeah. Getting low on money again, though, which I've been doing every single time. It's gonna really suck if I fail a mission at some point, because then I'll be, I'll be in way more trouble about the fact that I'm low on money. So, heal self, but increase stress. I think I'm gonna- I think I can rely more on other people's stress. Reduce stress, but increase everyone else's. And heal one person by 20%. I think I'm just gonna assume that I generally have enough healing in the party that I don't have to heal myself by 40. So I'm gonna grab that, uh, stress reduction- oh! Reduce stress by 20 on self. Ah, well this is a stress reduction already. Actually, yeah. The healing- the healing fulfills a utility that's not being- oh! I can equip both of them? Whoops. <laughs> Did I? Hang on a second. I'm pretty sure I bought a skill for someone else too and then I unequipped something. Because I, I miss... Because you start off with only three, I may have incorrectly assumed that you can only carry three. There we go. So you can carry how many? You can carry four, okay. Stress resist or... Tra yeah, I'll give you tracking. There we go, Serene. That's fine, that's not even that important. I just took him on a detour. All right, so we're gonna get this ball rolling. Mixed up my characters again. Forgetting about my own strategies. We'll be fine, or we won't. Good news is we're gonna get more deeds, so... Over the process of us clearing the way to the Hag, we'll probably have enough deeds that allows us to finish upgrading the blacksmith so that we can have a full group of level four characters as far as their equipment goes for fighting her, That'll, which will help us a lot for both survivability and offense. Both of which are pretty mandatory. I'm continuing to cling to my usual strategy here. I'll probably keep doing that. I, I really hope that they don't do a sell cost, because you're, you're just undoing a, a misclick. But I don't know. So that's the least money I've ever had. <laughs> Thankfully, I'll probably, I'll probably have less money to spend after this one, though. Because I don't think I'll be upgrading people's skills as much for my next mission. It's just... I'll just be buying people better weapons. And if any of these people are in the next mission, then that means that they... Uh, won't need upgrades because I just finished them. It's investment in my future, I tell myself, to... I knew all these paths once. Now they are as twisted as my own ambitions. Don't want to attempt to make myself feel better about my own mistakes. Ow! Immediately with the trap here. Lie in wait. No one play with the corpse. Unsprung and thirsting Corpses are bad for everyone involved. Alright. Especially the corpse. That guy's- that guy's fucked. Alright. Empty room explored. Exciting. So we did- we're once again in a situation of exploring 90% of rooms. So we're just gonna have to keep the ball rolling. We have a few fairly stressed characters, but we'll hopefully be able to manage that. If absolutely necessary, I may put Lucas on some stress-reducing uh, duty, but that's not ideal because uh, even when he's even if he does ev that for every single turn, his stress reduction just isn't that high. So we're getting more stress on Main G. That's irritating. Oh right, Lord Verd's a kleptomaniac. I really need to fix that. It's just not it's just not as as uh, big of an issue as the skill as the ones that uh are actual negative effects that affect combat, so... I, I, I find myself never fixing people's character quirks unless they're combat-related. Alright, here we have a ghoul. And he's unholy. Good. Because he's an unholy ghoul, that means that main G can do his crusader-type attack right on him. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Oh, no, I still have revenge. Okay. I thought I- I thought I- I thought I messed up and didn't bring revenge. So I'm gonna go ahead and cast revenge really quick, because... I could attack these maggots, but I want my crusader to be able to, to attack them. I want him to be able to attack the ghoul, which only works if he's in the background, so I'm gonna self-buff. So that I can help him obliterate things in a moment. So right now my character has plus 55% damage. He's just- he's comically- he's comically powerful now. 19 to 32. That's without any damage modifiers. Let's get that Holy Lance out of the way. There we go. Only really get to use that once, so now we're just gonna start clearing out these dumb little maggots. Hopefully, how many hit points do they have? Seven? Hopefully Lucas will be, will be able to kill one or two of them, uh, back to back. Dazzling Lane, how much do you do? One to two, you're garbage for that. 
two to five is better, but not helping that much. Uh, so I'm just going to want to be on healing duty, but no one really needs to be healed, so I guess I should go for a stun. Stun resist. Oh, wow. You, they have very high stun resist. And I can't even target the one in the back that has the lower stun resist. And no one's taking damage yet, right? So I guess I'll just hit some dude. All right. Take that, maggot. And then hopefully that'll increase my chances of... Uh, it reduces how high I have to roll in the future when I'm taking them out in a second here. So I can do Harvest to do a bleed, which could be handy because it'd bleed the big dangerous guy. And also potentially kill the guy up front. Yeah, let's go for it. Please, do maggots bleed? Oh shit, they resist bleed? Oh yeah, they have high resist, shit. Okay. I was hoping that that would- that, I was hoping that the additional dot from the bleed would finish him off, basically. But I could finish him off with this. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. So now we're in a good position where, uh, I should be able to just target, because the, the, uh, I don't really care about the maggots very much, and the fact that I killed one of them means the Slavery Ghoul should be in main G's attack range? Which should enable him to do devastating amounts of damage. We're in a bad position as far as, uh, yeah, we're not doing great as far as, uh, this, this boost accuracy. That, that helps accuracy too, right? Yeah, that'll help main G in a second here. He's not doing great on stress so far, so I can chop this guy. Low hit chance, but it will it could really destroy him. Which it did. Size alone does not so yeah, the uh, having, using the leper in the party is going to always be a gamble, Confidence but if it pays off, dear lord. Can you imagine critting for se can you imagine critting for 65 damage against a boss that only has like 150 hit points to begin with? Like that would be a big deal. We're already eating. All right. Didn't really expect that. Oh thing in the woods. You touch it, Chester. I'm sure you'll be fine. Oh, cool. Treasures. An occultist item for bonus crit against Eldritch, and that's about it. Hell, a, a nice crit bonus could be handy against Eldritch if you know that that's the, what the dungeon's packed with, though, because that means that uh, you get a lot of morale boosts just at random from that, without having to spend turns exclusively earning them. Okay, so that one we have we have an empty room and we have an em and a room we have two empty rooms but one of them also has a treasure behind it. Slaver and goals in the front row this time. And I also forgot to rearrange my party at all, but I guess it works out because this guy's up front, so we'll just smite his ass. Successful. Takes out uh, a bit less than half his hit points. And if I go to chop, I could help wipe out the rest. Or they'll die, or we'll miss. Also an option. There's definitely going to be an ongoing risk of main G. That's the thing about him, is his, his damage is high, but it's mostly high because of the fact that he's always at risk of uh, missing. So I can bleed both these guys. That seems like a good use of a turn. Oh, double crit. And, ah, and the only person that recovered morale was the one who needed it the least. Still, that bleed's going to be handy. It'll help us practically wipe out that character without even fighting them directly. But I should probably finish them off too. Uh, single target heal. Our most injured character. Wow, that person has... Oh! 58 hit points. That's a quantity. Is he capped off yet? Now he is. Okay. Go for that chop again. Oh, second dodge. That could seriously kill him if it lands, too. I'm gonna go for the AoE again, because it'll kill the back person, but also add a bleed to the front person if we're lucky. Wow. Double crit. Hey, someone else actually got a recovery too. It would just be falls, just be nice if it was main G for once. That howls. Oh, the howls the exact thing I don't want him to use because it demoralizes people. Oh wow, even my more accurate character is missing now. Did he reduce his accuracy? No, just his dodge. So I've been marked. Oh, you son of a bitch! You're gonna spam that? That's devastating for you to just start spamming. A victory, perhaps the turning point. Well. We might be getting into camping territory already, just because my morale is getting low. By which I mean my stress is getting high. Oh no, don't touch that. You're gonna- that's gonna make you snap. Oh cool, nothing. Good. I was really concerned that- that, uh, our leper was gonna touch that thing and then just lose their mind. And we were going to flip out. So I didn't bother lighting a torch when I walked in here because I knew that there wasn't gonna be a fight. So I'm just holding off for a bit. Although I do need to be concerned that stress goes up faster in this situation, doesn't it? Let's see, this is where I should make a, a decision. Do I want to just camp already? We have a ton of dungeon left, but a quick camping trip will help me with stress. And it'll help me with accuracy for the rest of the run. Gathered close in tenuous firelight, 
All right, so uneasy companionship. Everyone's stress is better. Now we need to work with accuracy here, because this is the, uh, here we go. Reduce stress and increase accuracy. That's a great combo for this character who really has issues with stress. So we can help him, we can help this character with stress. We also need to help him with accuracy because his, his attacks are not very accurate, but he's a really high damage character. So if we can boost his accuracy, as so, we can help with the fact that he's not very good at hitting people and get rid of his only weakness, really. This one's gonna cost th two? Okay, that's good. All right, so plus 30 accuracy. That's gonna help us a lot. Now, if we do turn back time, we can reduce this guy's stress by a ton. There we go. It's about as well as I was hoping that would turn out, is just re try to reduce parties, specifically his stress, and increase his accuracy. That, that kind of helps resolve our one biggest weakness in this situation. I'm ready for battle, let them come. That's it, no sleep for us, we march to victory. Sleep calls. We'll need our strength. One of you said one of you said sleep. The other one said not to sleep. These are not the same thing. Contradicting each other. All right, we're du it's dark. We got surprised. I really wish that they would just. Where's the button I clicked to say, "Hey, someone, just go on watch." Oh, cool. You're on watch. That means that no one gets surprised. Star is born. Like, as far as I know, unless you maybe if you use the uh, reduced surprise chance one. But aside from that. I don't see any way of dealing with the fact that you can get ambushed the moment you come out of town, which is annoying. Holy Lance against the back one. Yeah, that's handy. Let's get the baller rolling on damage. It wasn't going to finish him, but it was going to help. So how's Chop- oh my god. So now my scary high damage character has really high hit chance. What, what about Hugh, 9 to 16 not, versus against one guy, 13 to 22? I think I'm going to go for Hugh. It, it preps them for being finished off by somebody else because no matter what I do, I'm not going to kill them unless I crit. But I can prep us for later. If I do a Dirk Stab, I can charge forward, take out the back guy, and also get our Vestral back in the back. Oh wait, that may have been a t that was probably a terrible idea, wasn't it? I put I just put Mangy out of melee range. But yeah, I should not have done that. I don't know, that was a bad move. Oh well. Kill our Crusader up. Everyone's doing fine. We'll figure it out. How quickly the tide oh, come on, I just fixed people's more. Okay, at least the main G didn't take the hit. Yeah, I really I really fucked up by putting the Jester up front. I don't know why I did that. How about, uh, what's your range? Holy Lance can hit it. You can only, you, you can't do that from back there. Yeah? I done goofed. Alright, uh... I don't even want to move forward, because I'll just take the Crusader's turn away. And he can't move backwards? What? Ah, shit. This is really not ideal. Because if I pass the turn, he gets stress. But if I rearrange the party... God, I really messed up with that Dirk Strike. That was a terrible idea. I'm gonna pass the turn. Oh, four stress isn't bad. I thought it was gonna be more severe than that. That Dirk Stab kind of ruined everything. Alright. Let's just start taking these dudes out. 11 to 18 isn't bad. Hopefully I'll get lucky here. I did. All right, we're down to one enemy. That makes things much more, much less tense. I could go for the Dirk Stab to try to finish him off or I could back off. If I back off, we can start fixing our party composition. Continue to heal our damaged Crusader, which seems to be all he ever does is get, is get damaged. Continued healing. He's about capped off now. Come on, Jester, you can do better. All right, now that, now that he got a, re a turn already, that means that we're back in position with main G, so he gets to try to finish this dude off. And he did. All right. A trifling victory. So I made dumb mistakes, but the, at least the game didn't really punish me for it, so I get to sweep it under the rug and act like I didn't screw up and use Dirk Stab in a bad spot. Right. Who did I have the wrong skill for? Oh, wait, no, I'm fine. I'm misremembering my, I'm remembering my earlier scare where I thought I used the items wrong. Someone dropped this recently, probably on the run. It has a lock on it. I know a thing or two about locks. Come on. Ooh. Finding the stuff is only the first test. Sixteen hundred gold. Now it must be carried home. Money is good, but uh, but a uh, some deeds and portraits would have been better. Continuing south. Now we're gonna get a fight in just a second here. The light, the promise of safety. We are running out of torches at a concerning speed. Uh, we might have to do some low light combat soon, which could be oh bulwark of, of faith. That's one way to preserve my torch quantity. I'll have to look into that in the future. Oh, dodged. Whenever I'm getting 
yeah, that, that could be a thing. As you use that a few times during combat, and suddenly our 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 uh, our, our our torch is higher. So do I go for the chop, which has a decent chance of hitting, and yeah, it'll probably kill them without a buff. So let's just go for it, or it'll miss. All right, they're getting lucky so far. I'm starting to starting to miss my Hellion. Be left my Hellion bounty hunter work group works out so well for this. Uh, should I sing how much damage have you guys taken? Four and six. So single target heal will help out main G. Cap that back out. If I do an AoE bleed, an AoE bleed could... It won't kill them. Yeah, it won't do enough damage to make a huge difference. So I'm going to go for a buff to help our hit chances against these assholes that are dodging us. All these hit, all these hit buffs I'm 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 stacking on main G. If he if he still misses, I just don't know what to do about that. About to break. So we're taking some hits, so we're gonna self heal. So we're being pesky about it. I don't have bandages, do I? No. So I just have to heal through it, which is acceptable. So what's my hit chance? 81. Th there we go. Thank you, game. And follow that up with more. Do these are these unholy? They're just beasts, really. These guys should definitely be. They should. They, they should be unholy beasts. I should get. A, I should get a damage bonus against these guys. They're clearly skeleton zombie monsters, which makes them unholy. And that's we're supposed to think that these are still alive creatures that are just really, uh, really diseased, which is horrifying because they have exposed spine. I don't think that's physically possible to, to be in that sort of state and be any anything other than terrible. Uh, oh yeah, I could go for this. The crone. Three damage for three rounds. Yeah. Or it'll miss. <laughs> I was thinking this will soften this, this opponent up so that they're more likely to uh, be dead the moment I get a hit on them. Crazed Nasher. Uh, I'm going to go for the Crone because next turn, Main G could do an AoE. Or she'll just die. That's also an option. I figured if I weakened both of them, then Main G's AoE could finish them both off. Dirk Stab. There we go. That's a, that's a good time for a Dirk stab when the fight's over. This expedition at least promises success. It's fun it's fun to do, but I guess that might be a bad gamble to do because if he uh, if he missed, then my party composition's fucked up again, and the fight's not over. So we have to think about that. Right, we're still in a hallway. Whenever we have a fight, I always wow our stress is going up fast again. Granted, I help that by giving us stress increasing items. Uh, Whenever, we, whenever I have a big fight, I just assume that we're kind of already in combat. Let's see. Do I want to conserve torches or just use, let's just use one? I can conserve torches when I'm actually running out. Because when I feel the need... Oh, you're new. Blighted Giant, 73 hit points. Huh. Well, you could be dangerous. I think I might want to just start off with a revenge to set myself up for this. Also, oh, tw actually, yeah, maybe the self... Protection buff. If we buff our front guys, they're more they're less likely to take any serious damage. The way is lit. The path They'll help is clear. us against some of the damage that we You're know is going to be coming in here. It. Party heal, because most of us are hurt. That nine seems worthwhile. And ballad. I'm just doing an entire turn of preparation, basically, because we know things are about to get bad here. So, how much do I do without the buff? Fairly high damage, or I can increase my damage by a whole lot, which is what I'm going to do this turn. And this guy's just as soon as, now now next turn, this guy's just going to start wailing on that uh, on the uh, giant. And if I can, the crusader might. I think the crusader also has to attack the front people too. I'm going to try to stun. Oh, I can actually stun him probably. If I if I'm lucky, I was not lucky, but there wasn't there wasn't a lot of need to heal. And so here's where the danger comes. Oh, come on, you, de you demoralized everybody. That's just cheap. You're being cheap. Okay. I could go for a stun, which would have a decent chance of hitting, or I could go for an attack. I, I think I might want to go for the stun, just because this guy could be dangerous. So, if ah, double resistance. Okay. Failed twice. I was just hoping we could... Oh, son of a bitch, he does that? Okay, I stand by my attempt to stun him, then, if that's the type of shit he can do. He completely fucked my party. Oh god. Main G's all the way in the back, and he has slow move. So he's just kind of stuck back there being the worst. Alright, at least we're back up front with Smite. Please stun him this time. Come on. 
There we go. They still stop messing up my party composition, but we need to deal with some of these other guys too. Uh, Battle Ballad. I don't want to do Dirk Stab because I don't want to mess things up by going to the front. And all I can do from this position is buff people, unfortunately. I would switch forward, but that would put Main G backwards, and that would make it just a slower process trying to get him to the front. There we go. So after all these wasted turns, you'll soon be able to do moves. He's got a stun resistance bonus, so I'm not going to try to gamble that now. So I'm just going to go for damage now, and hopefully Main G's turn will be worthwhile. Good news is we're not taking much damage. Bad news is uh, Verd might go crazy again soon, which, you know, it happens pretty often. Just keep stacking those buffs for when we do get our, our moves in. The speed boost should be pretty handy for us. So Dazzling Light, I could go for another stun. What's my chance? Oh, I, I have like no chance of success, so no. I could attack directly, but that'd be garbage, so we'll just do Party Heal. Just for maintenance. Not a, not a lot of damage to heal, but not a lot of better options right now either. I guess my other option would have been, oh, that's what I should have done. I should have switched with the Jester so that he would be in his, in his own attack range. I missed a chance to fix the party uh, order. All right, more Battle Ballad. <laughs> Everyone's just getting comically high buffs because it stacks like that. All right, we'll go for an attack. And then now that Main G's up front, he can actually capitalize on all the damage he's supposed to be able to do with his... Oh no, really? God damn it. I used an attack- I specifically used an ability to increase my damage, and my damage buff's gone already before I get to attack. I'm just gonna go for it. I can't keep self-buffing if they're- if they're gonna be- if I'm gonna be at risk of him rearranging the party like that. So we'll switch with the Jester, like I should've last time. And that'll give us the ability to- ooh, we're marked. That could be bad. But now the Jester can start spamming AoE bleeds, which will be handy too, for softening the party. This is a bit of a messy encounter, but the, the good news is that so far we're not doing so bad with uh we're not we're not doing so bad with Lord Verd's stress. This that resistance was black, so I think he might have just resisted a stress right there. Let's see. Single target bleed. Seven to ten plus nine bleed versus uh Oh yeah, do it on the Blight Giant, he might actually die, like, in a turn here. Nine, and he has bleed. It, it, oh, it will take an extra turn to kill him. But he'll bleed when his turn starts, and if I attack with this character... Yeah! I attack with this character, even if he lives, he'll die from the bleed. So there we go, that, that, that Giant's out of the fight now. So now I can focus on people back in the back. But, I can't target any of them with this character right now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use Revenge to buff my damage, so that when the, giant, uh, when the giant dies, I can attack them and wipe them out really quickly. Hopefully. Or they'll screw me here. Okay, so... You're, uh, you're still dying, so... I'll use the Protection and Light bonus to help us out. Since I don't, yeah, since I didn't have a reason to attack, because he was going to die anyway. The greater the glory. It, was it was only going to be a waste of an action. So now my buff characters, characters can start wiping people out. Everyone's blighted, unfortunately, and I have, don't think I have medicine. So we're just going to have to out-heal that. So Vestral's going to be on full healing duty, and Lord Verd is hopeless. God damn it. No hope in this hell. So this isn't going to end well for me. No hope at all. It's our first character to flip out for a while. His affliction is hopeless. Uh, reduced, uh, reduced dodge from his affliction. Minus 10% hit points. Uh, minus 3 speed. That's not great. Minus 5 accuracy. And that's about it. Still not a good situation. Well, just gonna have to commit to, w to wiping dudes out. So 19 to 32 damage means this crone's dead now. Destroyed. Thank you, crit. That's just brutal. Alright, this character desperately needs to heal. 7 to 10. Just gonna keep doing ballads just because I don't want to... And how would that improve our lot? How? Okay, so Lord Verd's crazy. Because he because he's hopeless, he's now rejecting buffs. Oh god, and he's gonna stress everyone else in the party, isn't he? And he's, he's passing his own turns. None of this is really good. Okay. Well, I don't think I can do anything about it besides just try to finish the dungeon. Unfortunately, this means this entire party is going to probably be pretty high on stress, so we're going to have we're going to have a stress bill after this. Really wish that he would stop passing his own turns. I kind of need him to attack. Like that, see? 
At least Main G is here to, to pick up the slack. As victories mount, so too will resistance. I say that now, but in a moment here, Main G is also probably going to lose his mind. Oh, could that buff be good? That's a well. Aren't the wells usually good? Could help with the stress, perhaps? A beautiful fountain that looks unaffected by the surrounding chaos. Please revitalize this character. Reinvigorates the hero. Reduced stress. It didn't get rid of his uh, hopelessness, though. We have to reduce his stress by a lot more than that, but it'll help a bit. Didn't it, un weirdly enough, did not affect the uh, blight. He's still sick. So we're gonna move forward. I, I just accidentally used food instead of torch. Whoops. Thankfully, we got two bonus food earlier, so it doesn't affect my multiples of four that I have to worry about. So at this point, it's just about moving forward to the dungeon as fast as possible and hoping that we can get through before the party succumbs to all of the stress. And we're eating. So now we're basically out of food, so... This is a little concerning because it feels early in the dungeon. It's probably because of all the backtracking that's built into this dungeon, unfortunately, which is unavoidable because I have to explore 90% of rooms. Uh, we're, in, we're at a risk of spending too long walking around and that stresses us out over time and uses up our food. Which is a concern, because then we're going to get bonus stress from starvation and damage. And that's how you lose characters altogether. A boon at last. Wow, he's actually being positive about something. He's supposed to be hopeless. Herself, a victim to the spreading corruption. So what do we... So we're about to enter the next combat room, and this one looks scary. We'll see how it goes. I used... I burned a torch? Oh, it's just... Alright. There's worse things. It's just two parasite guys and two cultists. None of them seem to have particularly crazy damage numbers. I'd go for Hue for some damage, or I could do a single target, but single target's not strong enough to kill unless it crits. I might want to go for Hue. Because then I can do two hues and wipe them all out. Also, anyone else could step in to, to help finish them off, potentially. I don't, I, I don't like to gamble entirely based on the idea of critting. I give myself to the light. Are you going to pass your turn again? Are you hurting? You're, he's committing suicide. God damn it. <laughs> and he's missing. Alright, so he just can't really do anything right. Now I'm going to have to heal Verd just to try to out-heal his own attempts at suicide. Ah... Uh, He's gone full emo. He's gone full emo and he's trying to quit on us all together. Uh, battle ballad? <laughs> I think I probably want to do an AoE bleed, or should I do single target? It might kill this dude. Yeah, I'm gonna hope to kill this grabber all together. His bleed resist is not super high. If it bleeds, it bleeds. Alright, he's dead. There we go. That's what I was hoping for. So reduced number of en enemies means they get less moves. They're trying to stress out Lord Verd. Clarified in a single oh, strike. come on. You're just being dick about it now. Continue to heal Verd. It's fine. If if all that happens in this run is a bunch of stress, we can survive that. It's just... It, what my concern is that if things get much worse, if, uh, from a stressful... From a stress perspective, we might be at risk of having issues with... Uh, probably want to kill... Let's, yeah, let's just try stacking some bleeds. My, my concern is that all this, if, if, if Verd stresses out too much, he's going to increase the rest of the party's stress. And if everyone stresses out, then we have a whole party of people that aren't behaving my... Aren't, uh, aren't uh, listening to my uh, commands and hurting themselves and doing a bunch of dumb stuff. What's he doing? He just marked himself. Dear lord, he is going to be a problem. At least he still has a smite move, though. His best chance of hitting is the, is the grabber. There we go. Oh, it didn't kill it. Well, that's no good. Uh, I can stack. Yeah, absolutely. If I hit this guy, they're dead. And they're dead. So now we just have a fungal grabber with two hit points. And we we connected it, so we're set. These nightmarish creatures can be felled. They can be beaten. What's the situation looking like? So we have a trap ahead. Use our jester because he's relatively good with traps. Hello, spores. And we failed. Mechanical hazards. Ah. Possessed by evil intent. 18 stress is not a good number. And we're running out of torches very quickly. Hopefully we'll find another... Maybe we'll find another well, because that would help with some stress problems. Um, let's see here. I'm going to avoid going up, because that's a, that has a built-in uh, detour. I'm hoping that if I go left, left, and then either up or down from there, that we can 
reach 90% exploration without having to uh, backtrack again. Because that, that'll increase the length of this run. Is the trap maker's arm. Don't touch it, don't touch it. Okay, cool. Efficacy unwitnessed by his own eyes. Well, there goes our last torch, so we're just gonna have to make do. Thankfully, this isn't a boss- this is not a boss run, so... While we're, the party's not doing great right now, we don't have to worry about, uh... We don't have to worry about any really negative stuff happening. As far as like a big fight we really have to beat, because I can flee I can flee from fights if they're going too poorly for me. Probably go for Hugh to kill the first one, and then, yeah. Kill the first one, we'll work on the second one, so that whatever we do next to him will probably kill him. I've definitely grown accustomed to my, uh... I can bleed both of them, that's great. Crit, wow, crit. And we actually reduced some stress across the board too. I'm definitely- I'm definitely getting used to my Bounty Hunter Hellion combo, so it's kind of a bummer to go back to, a uh, uh, Leper Crusader. Just because their moves are a little less cool. I never thought that I'd grow, uh, attached to the character that has to hurt their own accuracy and dam- I mean, hurt their own damage chance every time they, uh, attack. Being the, uh, the Hellion, but I've gr apparently grown accustomed to having the Hellion around. So this AoE should kill the back one and hurt the front one. Might kill the front one too, and is almost a guaranteed hit. There we go. Yeah, that the uh thankfully the leper's not the one that's losing his mind right now, because his moves are actually really devastating once we has once he has a good hit chance, which we've been we've made sure to give him. Try to finish off the back guy. There we go. It's all, it's all about burst damage, just get through these fights as fast as possible. Because we we have stress to conserve now. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. So the good news is we have more food. The bad news is we still don't have four. Oh, it's, and I accidentally used one of them earlier, didn't I? Was that was that this run? If that's the case, then when if we starve, it's because I accidentally clicked on something once, and now we're screwed. Uh, do I open this? I already used my key, right? So if we try to open. Uh, a camera. I don't know if it's guaranteed or not. I think if you try to open. I think if you try to open a chest that's locked and you don't have a key. Does that mean that it's, uh. Oh, wait, no, I have a key right there. What? Th I must have picked up a key and forgotten about it. There we go, we're fine. More crests. Ah, there's always so many. Still, I can use that to upgrade something. Freaking Hellion. Get out of here. I'll, I'll, I'll gladly throw throw away a blood pendant. Oh, I have anti-venom. I could have got rid of that. Oh, whatever. This game is showering me with blood pendants throughout the entire playthrough. I'm not concerned about the fact that I may have wasted one. I think I already have two, and like every time I look at the store, there's another one. Welp, here we go, guys. This is us starving. The requirements of survival cannot be met 14 hit points, 24, stomach. 15... Let's just try injury and despondence. Set the stage for heroism. Try doing what I can to recover, hopefully. Don't touch that, don't touch that. Alright. We don't the, okay, this this room's empty, that's a good news. If we're lucky, we'll scout. And if we scout and there's a fight, I'll avoid the fight. So if I go south, there's no fight. We're going south. Don't touch it. There we go. I don't I'm not I, every time we walk past anything, I, I think someone's dumb quirk is gonna do it to us. Oh cool, an unburned torch. Oh, cool, there's two of them. There we go. Helps us out here, and this might- this might fulfill our objective, meaning I can leave. Absolutely, get the fuck out of here. Before something gets worse. Every cleared path and charted route reduces the isolation of our troubled estate. Never thought I'd leave behind a treasure room like that, but this- it was definitely something worth doing. Alright, so... Looking at 13,400 gold, about. And, ooh, a nice quantity of deeds. We've got nine deeds, 30 crests. The crests are fine, we can use them at the, uh, we can upgrade this, the stupid store again. But uh, at the very least, we get more deeds, which allows us to uh, get closer to upgrading our blacksmith like we need to. 1% crit for Lord Verd, that's a great boost to have. And Sozni has less stun resist, but more scouting chance in the wield, so we can, we can fix the negative. The big thing we're gonna have to do now is we're definitely gonna send Lord Verd to. We're definitely sending him to get recovery. Lord of this place before the crows and rats made it their domain. All right, so Serene and Thamurd recovered stress successfully, and we're gonna go right back in that Abbey to send Verd now because he's t he's having trouble. 
So you have a nice little stay there. Lucas and Main G pretty much have to go too, so I think we're gonna actually we're gonna break my rule a little bit and use some of these level fours next round because our level threes are kinda losing their mind right now. So main G, you get it back in there. And we'll take oops. We'll take Lucas to the uh tavern, probably to drink. Just get all over in here. You have a good time. Alright, so a fair amount of our money just got blown on that, unfortunately. So I might not have enough money to reasonably upgrade the weapons of whoever I take next, since they're going to be entirely new people that have don't have level 4 weapons yet, because all of my level 4 weapon characters got too stressed. Sozny's doing okay, though, thankfully. Uh, what is that? 50% stress? That's, that's okay. The healers seem to be relatively low uh, risk for that, for that component. Now that I'm going to continue to reduce trinket cost, because we have... We had more crest to spend, so I just went ahead and went for it. What do we have here? Bonus dodge. That camouflage uh, cloak is tempting. I don't want to. I don't want to blow all my money on it right now. But if it keeps showing up, that could be good for later. Uh, I used one of them already on my healer, I think. Yeah, 15% dodge. Uh, so if I put a second one of those on, my character would then have like 40% uh, dodge, which would be a pretty significant chance of avoiding moves. Dodge seems to be a really good thing to stack on your characters if you want them to not take damage. And so the defensive... The, the bad thing is that stuff that increases your dodge tends to make them weaker in combat, or just the fact that you're not using a strengthening thing to make them do more damage is makes them weaker by comparison. So I use them for characters that are utility-based usually, but being able to stack two of the same item would give you a lot of dodge chance. Uh, that's the same bounty hunter item I've had since like the beginning of the game. Who? 10% melee damage, minus 4 dodge. I don't think I'd want to sacrifice that much dodge for only 10% melee damage, though. It's That's that's really qualified. Like, The damage is, is only melee, which is already bad, and it's only 10. Like it, it, The fact that it's not a big boost, and it's specific to a specific type of attack, and it gives you a negative, is not a good mix. Ooh, tough ring, ancestral. 20% maximum hit points. If I, had the, if I was loaded right now, I'd buy this in an instant. Because I have tank characters this would be handy to give to. Uh, cause someone already has a tough ring that gives them 20 hit points and 8 prot. So if I could give them 16% protection and 40% and hit points, that would make them a, a force to be reckoned with. But I'll see you guys next time. We're going to go... We're, we're going to embark out there again. Continue to level up the wield area. Probably take some level 4 people into, into the party this time. And probably up upgrade some of their equi uh, equipment right before we set off. See you next time.